Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to be covering substitution. Now, to do substitution, there are a couple things you need to know. The first of the two is going to be order of operations. Besides order of operations, you're going to have to know how to deal with signed numbers. These are really important as when you're substituting, they're both going to take effect as to which operation you do first and what happens with the signs of the numbers you substitute. All right. And now, we have four problems here which range from easy to much more difficult. And finally, something that's a little bit more advanced for people taking advanced algebra courses or maybe higher levels, right? And so let's begin with the first problem here. We have number one, which says 5x minus 7y's squared. And the value for x and y is 2 and negative 3. So wherever we see an x, we're going to substitute a 2. Wherever we see a y, we're going to substitute a 3, a negative 3. And so we have 5, parentheses 2. We're using parentheses to substitute wherever the variable is. And we're doing it for both variables. So for the y value, we have a negative 3, and we're substituting it in, and we're squaring it. Now, the order of operations is what we have to follow next, because we see here there's going to be no change of signs, as the order of operations tells us to follow with exponents first. Right? We have parentheses, which there's nothing to do in parentheses here. Secondly, we have exponents, which there's an exponent outside of this negative 3. So what we want to do is square this negative 3. Everything else we're just going to rewrite. We have 5 times 2 minus 7 times negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is going to give us a positive 9, because a negative times a negative gives us a positive. And so this negative 3, when it's squared, gives us a positive 9. Secondly, we're going to finish the order of operations. So after we do exponents, we have division and multiplication left to right. We see we have none of those. And so what we do have is multiplication, no division, but multiplication on both sides. So we could do this multiplication first from left to right as we're working it. 5 by 2 is 10. Take away 7 by 9 is 63. And we keep the negative symbol between them because we haven't done that operation yet. That operator is just going to stand there. And now, 10 take away 63, the bigger number, take away the smaller number, 63 take away 10, 53, and we keep the sign of the larger number, all right? So this becomes negative 53, and we're done with the first one, all right? So now let's move on to number two here. Number two, we have negative 2x's squared, take away 4xy's, where our value of x is negative 3 and our value of y is 4. So I can go and set up parentheses for every variable I have. I have three variables in the problem, so that's negative 2, parentheses, the value of x, take away 4 times the value of x, times the value of y. And this first x is being squared, so let's put that 2 up there. And now let's substitute in the values. So we have two x's, the first and the second variable are x's, so we're taking the value of negative 3 and substituting it in. And for our last variable here, we have the y, which is a positive 4. And now what we want to do is follow the order of operations again. So here, when we look at all the signs, we see the only thing we can do here is the exponent one, right? So negative 2 times the value of negative 3 squared, which we already did. That gave us a 9. So we have negative 2 times a positive 9. Then we have minus 4 minus 3 times 4. Now we're going to follow the order of operations again. So after exponents, we're moving on to multiplication in this case, because there's no division. So we have negative 2 by 9. That gives us negative 18. And here we have three things multiplying. So we have negative 4 by negative 3. That's positive 12. And we have a 4 left. So the next step to do then is bring down the negative 18, since we're not doing anything here, because the multiplication precedes this, this Operation here of the plus with the minus, and 12 by 4 is 48. Again, we have the same case as before, two different signed numbers, so we're going to subtract the two values. 48 take away 18, that's going to give us 30, and we keep the sign of the larger number, which is a positive 30, so we're done here. That takes care of the second problem. Let's move on to number three. This is a little more challenging. We should see this in higher levels of algebra as well. Even calculus, you may see a problem like this where you're substituting values and an implicit derivative, even though if you're not at that level yet, it means nothing to you. But in any case, you may get this in an algebra problem where you have to substitute and solve. And there are many operations going on in here. So what we have 
is parenthesis 2x's plus y multiplying by x minus 3y's. And in this case, again, our value of x is going to be negative 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use brackets for the original parentheses sets. And when I substitute inside the parentheses, I'm going to use parentheses for those values. So I have 2 times the value of x plus the value of y, close bracket, and again, another set of brackets. And we have x minus 3 times the value of y. Now let's substitute in the value of x's and y's, right? So it's a x, y, x, and a y. x, y, x, and a y. My value for x is negative 2. So I know I have a negative 2 here, negative 2 here. My value for y is 3. I have a 3 here and a 3 here. Now I want to evaluate. Now in the order of operations, what's going on here? Inside the parentheses, now that I do have parentheses that follow the order, inside the parentheses I have to follow every operation within each set. So here in the first set, what I'm going to have is, I'm going to use a bracket to keep this parenthesis set contained. 2 by negative 2 is negative 4. And finally a plus 3. And this is multiplying against negative 2. Negative 3 by 3 is negative 9. And now I have to complete these order of operations before I can multiply these two sets since the parentheses take precedence over anything else. And so here in the first set of brackets, I get a negative 1. In the second set of brackets, I have a negative 11. And when I multiply negative times a negative, I get a positive. 1 by 11 is just positive 11. And that covers the first three problems of this video. Now for the last problem, we know it's a little bit more challenging because it sort of looks like a quadratic equation. So if you're in advanced algebra, you'd understand what you're doing here with this. But let's see how this is going to work out. For other people in higher levels of math, you could understand this little contained piece right here is called the discriminant. And it's part of the quadratic equation. And this should be something that you should be very familiar with because it becomes very useful when you're doing your work. So let's see number four here. This is going to be a little bit more challenging for you guys who are in an earlier level because you have square roots here. If you're just starting algebra in the elementary state, you probably don't see too much of this, right? So here we have our problem, negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And this, we know our values for b is negative 8, a is negative 3, and c is 3. So I'll leave those little slots available for the substitution. Since we have plenty of space here, I'll leave it nice and spacious for the substitution to occur. So everybody can keep up with what's going on at home. So now our value for b is negative 8, so we have the first two variables are negative, they're b, so we're just putting a negative 8 in there. Our value for a is the next substitution, which is a negative 3, which is the third variable here. And the last variable is a c, which is the final term here, this just becomes a 3. So now we're following the order of operations again, and when we're following the order of operations, we want to take a look and consider what is the parentheses set. Now, a lot of people may think that the square root's a parenthesis, but it's not. It's actually an exponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to look into everything else to see if there's anything to do within parentheses, and there's nothing to do. So we're going to move on to the next step, which is exponents. Now we're dealing with the radicand. So we're looking inside of this radicand, and we're going to simplify everything as soon as much as possible inside the square root. And this gives us negative 8, negative, negative 8 minus the square root. Negative 8 squared is 64. Take away uh, 4 times negative 3 times 3. And so negative 4 by negative 3, we're doing multiplication left to right. Negative 4 by negative 3 is going to give us a positive 12. And we still have a positive 12 times 3. And so let's continue working this out one step at a time. This way we can be safe with what we're doing. And sometimes it's better just to take your time, not to rush yourself through the problem because you can uh, omit something that you were doing. So here we have the square root, negative square root of 64 plus 12 times 3, which is 36. Now let's take one more step and add these two up. We have negative, negative 8 minus the square root, 64 plus 36, that's going to give us 100. Now the square root of 100 is the next step because we're still dealing with exponents. 
is going to be 10. And now we have a negative, negative 8, which is a multiplication state because we can imagine there's an imaginary 1 here. Multiply these out now, and we get 8 minus 10, which results in 10 take away 8 is 2. Keep the sign of the larger number when the signs are different, and it's a negative 2. Thank you.